Hi guys, welcome and welcome back. In a recent video, we talked about the beauty standards in modern China, chubby eyelids, seed-shaped face, and why Emma Watson with her adorable freckles would not be considered a beauty in China. So today we're gonna dig into the topic of beauty in China further, and in particular, what was beautiful in ancient China. We'll talk about four beauty practices, the cute, the quirky, the dangerous, and the crippling. We're gonna start with the cute one. After a princess woke up with the imprint of a fallen plum blossom on her forehead and, according to the legend, could not get rid of it for three days, it became fashionable for women to glue gold flakes, bird feathers, dragonfly wings, fish scales, and precious stones to their foreheads. Or an easier version of that, just to paint a flower on the forehead. The practice was popular in the Tang Dynasty, and this makeup is called Hua Dian. Couple this flower with thick, bushy eyebrows, narrow, slanted eyes, heavily rouged cheeks, small cherry lips, and you get a beauty of the Tang Dynasty. The makeup is still widely known in modern pop culture, which replicates traditional looks, so you can often, very often, see a little flower painted on the forehead in lots of historical dramas. Now to the next beauty practice, the quirky one. In ancient China, long fingernails were a sign of power and beauty. It was a status symbol, which showed that a person literally didn't have to lift a finger to do any kind of work. And by long fingernails, I don't mean those red almond-shaped nightmares with rhinestones that were popular some time ago. I mean really long. 10, 20 centimeters long for both men and women. Of course, it takes a lot of time and care to grow such long nails, and you need to protect them so that they don't break easily. So you're gonna need some kind of a case or a cover, and that is exactly what was used, the nail guards. In Chinese, they're called zhijiatao or hu zhi, literally protection for the nails or fingernail covering. Like any paraphernalia of the ancient reach, these things quickly became extremely elaborate and exquisite, more like decorative pieces of art made of gold, covered with all kinds of precious stones, super flamboyant, super extravagant. The nail guards reached their peak of intricacy in the Qing dynasty and became an iconic symbol of Qing royals. Look at the nail guards of Empress Cixi of the late Qing dynasty, who ruled China at the onset of the 20th century. So you can say she really nailed it. Her nails were 8 inches long, about 20 centimeters, so the nail guards were probably even longer. And of course, they were super luxurious and super expensive. Okay, the beauty practices that we've covered so far are pretty innocent, right? They don't try to change the body. They are more like ornament, more like decoration. But there are more, and some of them were really dangerous, such as breast binding or shu xiong. Nowadays, you would think that most women prefer um, ample, curvy, round, beautiful breasts, but interestingly, the practice of flattening the chest existed in China for a very long time, long before Mao Zhuxi and uh, the genderless communist era came into play. For example, by the use of tu dou, which literally means belly cover. It's kind of an undershirt, kind of a rectangular bodies. One of the functions of tu dou was to flatten the breasts, because traditional ideas of beauty in China promoted what is called ping xiong, flat chest, flat breasts, and women with small flat breasts, or at least those who try to achieve that effect by breast binding were considered examples of innocence, virtue, and chastity. On the other hand, women with large breasts were considered rural or easy women. Apart from two, though, women would just use a band of white cloth to wrap repeatedly around their chest. The practice was mainstream well until it was banned in 1927, and it was criticized from many different aspects, like emancipation, aesthetics, and, of course, women's health. Okay, beauty practice number four, the crippling one. This one is by far the most gross and repulsive for us today. 
the foot binding. This tradition started a really long, long time ago, and it is genuinely an ancient China practice from around the 10th century. Foot binding was meant to turn a girl's feet into three inch long golden lotuses. So they would fold the toes under and bind them tightly. It goes without saying that the process was excruciatingly painful, to say the least, and it was used on girls as young as three, four years old, when the feet are not fully formed yet. As a result, you get this wobbly walk and doll-like feet, three inches long, about eight to ten centimeters, which were considered very feminine, refined, delicate and vital to a girl's marriage prospects. It's even more brutal in that this practice continued well into the 20th century and it was not completely stamped out until the revolution in 1949. And there are actually still living Chinese women who had their feet bound when they were kids. In poor families who could not spare a pair of working hands when the girl was crippled, feet couldn't work, they would start foot binding much, much older, shortly before the girl hit puberty and was ready for marriage. Once a girl was married and foot binding fulfilled its main function of attracting a husband, the bandages were taken off and she returned to work. Obviously, from our standpoint today, this practice is not only cruel, painful and oppressive, it is also terribly unhygienic. Foot binding could and did cause paralysis, gangrene, ulceration, and even in rare cases, death. Although there was a belief that it increased fertility because the girl's blood would flow up from feet to her hips. Foot binding was banned in 1912, but as it always happens with such practices which are forced for such a long time, for centuries, people stop doubting their effectiveness. And when a mother or a grandmother is told that this or that beauty practice can increase a girl's marriage prospects and can make her more attractive for a potential husband, what woman of the early 20th century would not take the chance? So, foot binding only ended in the 1950s. What beauty practices do you find most shocking? Maybe in your country you have some other examples of very extreme ways to make a girl more beautiful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!